Hi, I'm Dr. Mike. And I'm Noah. And this is the, the NF Geeks, Geeks Christmas, Christmas Movie Special. Special. Noah, thanks again. Of course. For coming on. This is our last episode. Yep. Final uh, one. Yep, last one. We've had a fun time doing all of these. Oh, very fun. Yes. And so uh, our last, we saved the best for last. <laughs> um, we started these uh, segments with the movies with Die Hard, and we ended with, we, we just watched yesterday, is Die Harder. Die Hard to Die Harder. <laughs> which the title itself is excellent. What an excellent title You this have is. to die twice as hard. That's right. You're not dying hard enough. <laughs> if I only could die harder, everything would be right. If you loved me, you'd die harder. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> So, um, all right, so let's talk about the movie. Um, so, you know, one thing they did is they really amped it up. Uh, oh, yeah, this one, it's, you know? it's, it's nuts. Yeah. Um, definitely with that um, airplane scene. <laughs> oh, God. That yeah, is so, they, it, yeah. it builds it up like, like they're going to be saved, but, like, they just let the airplane crash. You know, the great thing about that, too, is that um, they it, with that, they really... Uh, jacked up the body count compared to oh, Die yeah, Hard yeah, 2. Yeah. Like, there's 200 people in the plane, so they're already, you know, way, way up. And what's really awful, too, is they show the inside of the plane. Like, the plane's crashing, and then you see the pilot screaming, and you see the people oh, screaming in the, in the fuselage, and then this this way over-the-top explosion, <laughs> you know, of oh, the plane. God. It's really... Because <laughs> it really does build you up like they're going to be saved. <laughs> like, or something like something last minute is gonna happen and save them, but it doesn't. It just kills them all. Yes, and it's <laughs> and it and it's over the and it shows how over the, the top it is. Like, cause you know one of my favorite scenes in it is when um when uh, Bruce Willis, you know, it's John McClane, uh -huh. is on his stomach. This is in the catwalk scene. He's on his stomach and he's rolling on his stomach and shooting at the he, bad doing, guys. They have like it, automatic weapons and he just got that pistol. Right, but it's, he's, it's even more absurd because he's rolling really right. slow. <laughs> I know. And they all have these, these semi-automatics you know, shoot at him. Right, and they're somehow missing. Yes. And they also up the... Um, I don't want to say the gore factor, but it seems like when people are getting shot, a lot more blood, a lot more... It's more graphic. A lot more overacting. Yeah, you think so? Of it. You know, <laughs> the, oh, the guys in the scene? Oh, yeah, so... Yeah, yeah. It's totally... It's totally over, overacting the death. Yes. Um... Uh, it, the, the, um... The terrorists themselves, they weren't really terrorists, they were soldiers. Right. But their, um... Their plot was a lot more complex. Yeah, than, yeah. It, uh, it kept you guessing. Yeah. Well, not, not exactly. It, um... How do I put this? You, everything's answered, but at the beginning, you're asking a lot of questions about why they're doing this because it seems very convoluted at the beginning. Yeah, it kind of gets into right. You know early on that Alan Rickman is uh, is doing a heist. Like you know, once you get up to the to Mr. Tagami. Oh yeah, almost. No, you know, almost immediately as soon as they enter the building. Really? You, yeah, you you immediately know what they're up to. Oh. I figured by the time you could oh, well, yeah, yeah, you try to that get that the too. codes, but um, and just not how they've planned out how right, to right. defend themselves. But right, what the real point is and how they're doing it—that's always sort of vague. Mm -hmm. um, also, what do you think of the double cross with the the uh, the bullet yeah, you know, with the clips? Yeah, that that uh, I, I I asked that almost immediately after seeing them. So like, I because I knew there had to be something with it. That was I it. I I wasn't expect I didn't expect it, and I feel really bad for the guy that gets his neck. <laughs> oh, the poor guy. Yeah, I know. Just an SJ doing his job. Right, you new know. guy. Yeah. Too. And so it's interesting that they have this balance of um, they kind of flipped what went on in Die Hard, in, in that the the really smart African American in Die Hard was the on the bad guy side. You know, he was the evil guy. And then the uh, the law enforcement guy was the good guy, you know, and you know right. McLean's friend. But both, then this time they switched it. Right, both have a balance. One right. one has um, right. First one has a uh, black evil tech guy. Right. Uh, and a good black guy cop. Good and, black guy uniform. Right. Yeah. And then this one has bad black guy military guy. Yes. And good black tech guy. Right, which you don't know. Because the cross, the, the double cross. What would you think of the double cross? I don't know. That's the third black guy who's on the, in the army. Right? That, that again, I'm not expecting that. And he really seemed like he would have gotten along with McLean, too. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Wait, wait, which black guy? You were talking about the other black guy at the beginning who almost gets... Uh... Yeah, no, no. There's the bad black guy who's 
The All right, first but isn't one. that who's the first one? Do you mean the guy and the the, the baggage? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. The first guy, then the tech guy. So I was then talking he... about the. Uh, I was I was just talking about the the major. I yeah, wasn't thinking of that first later. guy. I know. I wasn't yeah. thinking of that guy. Well, that's all right. Um, okay, what about the... Apparently, um, Die Harder 2 is racist. That's <laughs> two it's, black bad guys. That's right. It's good two to one, you know. Um, it's, it's almost as racist as Gremlins. Almost. <laughs> it's, um... it. I have to say, it is weird watching this and the first Die Hard after 9-11. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. It shows how, like, 9-11 has changed everything. In terms of movies. Because you could not make those two movies now. Yeah, really. Or even, like, anywhere close to 2001. Well, it's, um... And it sort of strangely foreshadows um, Right, because, like, the, one of them is about airplanes crashing, and the other one is about a building exploding. Yeah. So it's a skyscraper building exploding. Right. Like, it's really, like, just... <laughs> Apparently the writers of Die Hard were having an NF moment. <laughs> well, you couldn't, um... You know, it's right. You couldn't have necessarily have even predicted that. And you certainly, these movies are pretty much ruined. Or like a lot of movies, I wouldn't say totally ruined, but a lot of movies are ruined from 9 11 because when you watch the movie, you can't help but think about 9 11. Right. Like there's no way you could just block it out. Right, most, I mean, planes blowing up, buildings, terrorists. Right. It's the most obvious ones are the ones taken in New York where you see the, um, where you see the Twin Towers. Yes. Um, but those like that, like Die Hard, that just happen to have elements of what happened also bring up. Yeah, and it's almost, it's worse because it's sort of re- replaying it or, re- or just even foreshadowing it in a way that's sort of dark and sinister. Where it's, when you see the World Trade Center in a movie, and here's the thing, it'll ruin any movie, a romantic comedy, whatever. But when you see it in the movie, it's like seeing someone who died. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. Whereas this, where these movies are sort of predicting a horrible thing. Right. You know? It... it it's just weird how close these two movies, like, kind of got to what actually happened. Yes. I don't know if any other movie is like that. Well, there's always some that, um... There's always some kind of predictor thing that goes on with movies. But these two back-to-back is pretty right. tough. All right, well, let's, um... One last thing before we get to the Myers-Briggs stuff is, uh... You know, one another over-the-top scene that's just totally over-the-top is when he jumps off the helicopter... Onto the wing. <laughs> that was <laughs> like it's almost too much. At it, that it's point. almost like re- okay, what are you really planning? Because that's nuts. <laughs> yeah, but it seems pretty hard. Like it looked like it was a real helicopter right, it, with a real seven forty seven, like during, a real shot. I said it during um, while we were watching it. Like, okay, what about New York? Made John McClane this like super cop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was. That, yeah, that, really. Okay, because really, all he is is a cop from New York. <laughs> That's just nuts. It's yeah, apparently like, he has powers better than like special forces. Right. That's another. <laughs> He's thing. the greatest detective. Like, He's like Batman. Right. Like that's the, the other thing. Like it. Like the incompetence of the cops in both movies is just way too over the top. Yeah, that's it's, true. Like, I mean, I mean, I guess it's, like, a bit, like, anti-SJ, but, like... Yeah, this is a good segue. Like, um, S- we're, okay, even the most assholy cop, SJ cop, isn't as that stupid. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's really bad in uh, the Die Hards with the cop and confidence. Yeah, in fact, you could look at all of Die Hard 2 as sort of being anti-SJ. I mean, SJs are, they're either incompetent... Or they're or, the bad guys. Or they're the bad guys, you know what I mean? Right. They're either, you know what I mean? You got, so there, there's the the cop who's running the thing. Yeah, okay, bad. okay. That being said, who's leading them? Because that's the thing about evil SJs. They're usually, they're not like doing... I think there's an NT somewhere that's behind it pulling NT, them? NF, or SP that's guiding them. Yeah, I would say it's most likely an NT. You I think, guess. um... Yeah, well, Colonel certainly, um... Colonel Stewart, is it? Colonel Stewart. Yeah, he seems kind of NT to me. He seems like, uh, an NT. I would say both of the, both movies, it's INTJ. If I had to give one to Colonel Stewart and Alan Rickman. Hans uh, Gruber. Hans <laughs> Gruber. I would say Hans Gruber is definitely an INTJ. Of oh, yeah, of course. For sure. He even looks like INTJs I know personally. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, I don't know about, um... Stewart. Yeah, I would say Stewart. I would say INTJ. Because it's yeah. very strategic and all planned right, out. Right, right. And, you know, but still though the majority are SJs. The guy, um, yes, but again, the major S- is an ESTJ. I would say he is. Right, right, right. Right. So yeah, and but he's again, on the wrong side. N- no matter. Yeah, but he's following Stewart. True. Too. 
So, like, it really, it does um, come back to, like, who's leading the bad SJs, I think. <laughs> that's a, cause I have to say, though, that's such a typical SJ. Because basically what you're saying is, I'm just following orders. Okay, yeah, you know, but... I, know, that's what I don't know, from my perspective, uh, yeah, right, we just of are. Of right. You know, you know, you're right. That is your, from that perspective. Um... I wanted to talk about uh, John McClane. I, mean, I don't think we really talked about this when we talked about Die Hard, but I want to talk about his um, uh, personality type. Okay. So I thought we went it down it in the first one. Uh, I don't know if we did. I don't think we did. But we're going to do it now anyway. Okay. Um, because I think uh, he's... All right, so first of all, I think he's an introvert. Okay. What uh, makes you think that? Um, I don't find that he's particularly extroverted. He's only intro- extroverted when he's, like, screaming and yelling because he's flipping out. In his normal talking, he doesn't sound particularly extroverted. Okay. Okay, I think just the circumstances are making him a little nuts. Okay. Um, I think he's, uh, I, I think he's an SP. I don't think he's an SJ. Because he's sort of that, like, cop always breaking the rules. Yeah, again. Kind of, you know. Uh, he really, he... He's not judging. He's calling it like it is. Yes. Especially the, that cop at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Um, so I think he's a. So I think it's an introvert. Yeah, he's I think not. He's ju- yeah, he's not really judging. He's no. just saying his mind. And he's not a rules guy. He, he yeah, breaks the rules. He doesn't matter. He, look, he wants to get out of the parking ticket. Yeah, it, it's right kind of also beginning. that's a bit of a thing there too. That it's like um. It's like, not only is it anti-SJ, but it's kind of pro-SP. Like, look, he's like this badass guy that's getting out of this by just <laughs> doing whatever he wants. Yeah, that's because in a, in the movie world, SPs are fun and SJs aren't. The only time it's fun is when, like, there's just one SJ okay, okay. dealing with a ton of SPs. I have to say, that being said, SJs do have one of the coolest guys. <laughs> All right, we well, have sure, RoboCop. Sure, so I think the SPs can do whatever they want. We okay, have RoboCop. that's fine. You can have RoboCop. Um, all right, let's but let's figure out. All right, so I'm gonna say that that John McClane is an ISTP. That's what I'm gonna go with. Yeah, that seems about he's, right. He's not right. like that uh, dickish ESTP. Right, and he's um so he seems introverted. He's uh, I th- again I think he's an SP. He doesn't seem like a feeler. I don't get the sense he doesn't. He's not right, he sympathetic. He has intimate moments, but yeah. not like anything. Yeah, no, he's no, not no. sensitive. Right, it's not sensitive. He's it's not just a like, sensitive guy. God. Right, like thank God this is over. Thank God I'm yeah. here. So that's so that's the NF Geek's official position on John McClane from Die Hard, and Die Hard, and Die Harder is that he's an ISTP. Do you agree? Disagree? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. Um. All right. Is there any other Myers Briggs element uh, we're missing? There's no, because I want to mention this. There's no, as far as I can tell, there's no NFs in this movie. Maybe his wife on the plane, but she could easily just be um, any kind of feeler. She could be an ISFP, mm. an ISFJ, you know, who knows. But I don't see, there's no NFs in the Die Hard movies. Well, that's because think. it's aiming for the S's. It's true, but I mean, we wouldn't be involved, even just, we're not even getting killed. Like, we're nowhere. We don't even exist. We're not. We're invisible <laughs> in the in the Die Hard movies. We're yeah. not even there. You're there spiritually. <laughs> I guess. Well, it is Christmas. You That's might That's right. Well I'm supposed to the Christmas. Uh, I'm sort of in there. You're All the, right. You're the forces of nature. You were the windstorm. <laughs> I have the cold snow of your body. You know, of, you know of of you know of human nature. The absence of love in human nature <laughs> in a in a desperate uh, storm of a world. Um, all right, well, that's a good, um, actually, segue to talk about Christmas, because we were talking about this before. And because um, what we've been doing with each of these videos is trying to find where is Christmas in the video. This know? one, much like, I believe, Batman, really, it, it felt like Christmas was just there. Mm-hmm. It's it's not really representing anything. It's, it's just there, and people are just like, meh. Yeah, it's kind of a, just a plot point for two things. One, to connect it back to, to Die, Die Hard, Hard 1. You know, and the other one is just, I guess, to allow for snow. And, you know, because they're right. on the East Coast now. and so Which is like a step up from the first Die Hard. In terms of Christmas. Right, in terms yeah, of Christmas. Yeah, at least there's snow, you know. But, like, right. other than that, nobody cares. Yeah, there's, no, there's so. nothing. And, and so I was thinking about that because we were talking about that. And my thought, and my thought is grim. <laughs> or just just depressing is that the reason for that is because you know 
Hollywood writers are just that, living in Hollywood and, um, you know, a very decadent part of the United States. And they are basically shallow and don't <laughs> as people, and they don't really know Christmas or how to use Christmas properly, except for platitudes of, you know, Merry Christmas and, like, sort of giving this fake reflection of Christmas, but not really understanding so essentially, depth at all. So, essentially, they're the first Die Hard Christmas. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Just complete, shallow surreal um uh secular christmas yes it's secular but it's even it's it's even worse than that because it's a reflection of secular christmas it's not even secular christmas it's an it's, it's anti-secular it's it's, it's it's a, a parallel <laughs> universe it has one of those goatees <laughs> no it's it's a it's just it's fake secular christmas so like it's a fake of a fake that's absurd i know but it's true like they're not it's 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 basically a reflection of it and it's really sort of really hollow it's a in all these well, now that we've watched all these i realize how hollow it is because there's no actual depth or connection back to something deeper in terms of christmas there's right, nothing right. first of all you're right religious christmas is just absent there's no churches there's no um mangers there's no well, no uh, there's one church okay what the church where they're setting up all the equipment to kill people yeah that place Maybe that's representing something. Yeah, oh, gosh. <laughs> but there's no um, there's no depth of Christmas going on where there could be. You could make some sort of message, but it becomes absurd. Like the end of this movie, the end of Die, Har Die Harder, is really awful when you think about it. Because, you know, the wife gets off the plane and they're hugging and kissing and then the, the cop comes over and he says, Hey, it's okay, here's your parking ticket. And then the the, you know, the music comes in, you know, it's all oh, the weather outside, you know, let it snow comes on. Mm -hmm. And like... Okay, like, within the past hour, 250 people died a fiery, horrible death. And everyone's just kind of, well, the weather outside is okay, frightful. Okay, okay, I get you that. Know? But I think the view of it, either from the characters or the writers, I guess, was that... The writers, I guess, or yes. whatever, um, was that there's... Okay, it's, it's tragic that those people, 250 died, and that's horrible, and they should be mourned. But there are tons more people in all of the other airplanes okay. that survive. Okay, first of all, I don't think... It, right, are you telling me that the writers in Hollywood are making this utilitarian judgment and then putting that into the script? Okay. Or I is it just said, that... I also said characters okay. and reviewers. It could be the audience. All right. See, I think <laughs> that this is a completely... <laughs> and I'm always right. Yes. A completely shallow <laughs> understanding of Christmas and humanity and life. And, like, a much more deeper th Christmas thing would be to be thankful for our lives. Not to be all happy. Well, and I don't know. Outside. I would think you that... You know, to be ha thankful I that we are not... I think John McClane you know? and everybody on the plane is thinking that. It, but, no, it doesn't seem like... It seems like it's all la, 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 la. Well, you know, they they're all happy. Yeah, they kind of do, because it seems very shallow and empty at the end. It shows that Christmas is totally unimportant. Please, human lives are unimportant in this movie, or just plot points. But, I mean, okay, <laughs> fine, I can deal with that, but, you know... The, the juxtaposition of it with Christmas is just kind of... It's making Christmas really, really shallow, you know? Uh, you know, because really Christmas is just there to sort of, you know, just to sort of be there to ex make excuses for things. But really, um, there's no greater connection back to Christmas at all. Well, that's And that's true about the whole experience we've had. The Gremlins got the closest to Christmas because Christmas is, like, around no matter what's going on. Yeah, you know. and it, it did get a bit into the religious, I mean... Yes, slightly. By, with songs you know. and whatnot. And at least Batman had, like, mistletoe, so we'll give him that. <laughs> but still, and used it correctly. But, you know, it was still kind of... It left me shallow, this whole experience. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad we didn't do, like, oh, let's do the the Grinch and or, Elf and... Uh, it's know, a Wonderful Life. Or It's a Wonderful Life, yes. I'm going to open... Um, just say it out loud and out myself. I hate... It's a Wonderful Life. But I think that, that movie so is so odd. By the it's fact just that you're overdone. In that. It's just overdone. But you're like, but that no. that seems so odd no, based on I, your I'm enemies. done with it. I hate the angel. I just what's his name? Charlie, whatever it is. I don't. I've never watched it. Yeah, I haven't watched it in years because I hate it. So, um, Clarence, that's the name of the angel. Before, <laughs> before I start getting nasty emails, <laughs> Clarence the angel. I don't even care what his name is. Okay. But, kind of a dumb name for an angel to have. Yes. But I'm glad we did these movies because um, even though they were anti-Christmas, it made us think about Christmas. Right. The others don't make you think about Christmas because it's just in your face. Whereas this made us think about Christmas. And so what I thought, and I'd end on this, Noah, is that, okay, there, I'll tell you where Christmas is in these movies. You want to know where Christmas is? Where? Okay. Christmas is in us, meaning you and I. Because wait, 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 wait. we. 
Christmas. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Chris, Christmas, yes. All right, but yeah, okay, but seriously. Okay, it is know. because we sat together through like eight hours of movies. You know, to analyze them and think about Christmas and make these videos. So, you know, this is our sort of Christmas project. We've been doing it for days. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had a Christmas, you know. We put the Christmas in those movies. We put the us in Christmas. That's right. We put the us in Christmas. We <laughs> did. So we made it, and so I'm glad, I'm grateful for that. Of course. You know? Um, you know oh, my. That's right. We had a good Christmas. That we so, did. Um, all right. So that's it. So uh, thanks for watching all of these for Christmas. And and um, make sure you follow NF Geeks on Twitter and Tumblr and join the fun on the uh, Facebook forum uh, for NF Geeks. And, it's uh, happening. It's happening. That's right. And Noah, thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You know, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah, and uh, Merry Christmas to all of you.